Is an RV a bad investment? Yes. Coming from a financial professional, an RV is a horrible investment. And I could end the video there, but I want to explain a little more about the logic and process behind choosing what an investment may be or may look like to you. So about a year ago, I was driving home one day and for some reason it popped in my head, let's sell everything, buy an RV and travel the country. Don't know where it came from, uh, could be divine intervention, whatever. But I got home and I proposed this to my wife who gave me a very strange look and uh, you know, kind of jokingly laughed about it. And, and, and so we started watching these full-time RV YouTube channels. We still do to this day. Uh, we haven't launched, but the way I usually do things is I will uh, have an idea in my head and then just continue on about it until it comes to fruition. But anyway, we started looking at RVs, travel trailers, a bunch of different styles and shapes and, and things like that. Our family of four, we have two young kids. What would work for us, you know, kind of going full time or just the camping thing? You know, let's let's try it out. And we ended up finding a 2007 Pace Arrow, uh, Fleetwood Pace Arrow. It had 25,000 miles on it, barely used. Uh, interior looked perfect. There was just some issues with the top right above the driver's seat. Uh, you could tell from years of just sitting in the sun that the paint was faded. And it was backed in among these other RVs. And, you know, we were looking at the motor homes uh, mostly because they were self-contained. I don't have a truck to pull one. Uh, nor do I really need one for my day job. I travel lots of miles, so driving a truck wouldn't make any economic sense. So the price was what I thought was a really good deal and uh, talked my wife into it. And a few weeks later, we came home with this thing. And our first camping trip out was not fun. I uh, said, hey, let's just go Friday night. Let's load everything up quickly and go. And it didn't quite work out. There was a little bit of fighting and uh, arguing. So we ended up leaving on the next Saturday morning. And it was it was an okay trip. There was a lot of anxiety uh, with the kids. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell phone reception. And uh, what if something happens? And, and uh, after that trip, I was pretty sure there was going to be a for sale sign in the window of that RV. So that was our first trip. Then our second trip, we went to a local state park. We literally drove there. I got the thing all leveled, set up, and my oldest said he didn't feel good and he had a fever. So we quickly packed up and drove back home because we were only 20 minutes from home. And I thought, it's not worth staying. We can just get home. So that was our two camping trips in our RV. Again, after that second trip, I'm like, I'm putting a for sale sign on this thing and, and getting rid of it. But we ended up keeping it. And then come spring, we had this big trip planned. We were gonna go to uh, visit family in another state and COVID happened. So <laughs> um, we've taken it out a few times and we really truly enjoy it. Now, after I've explained kind of the situation and how I got where I am. Again, being a financial professional and having investments and things like that, I know that it is a horrible investment. Uh, they do not appreciate in value. They, they depreciate very quickly, very rapidly, and you lose money on them. But it also got me thinking this weekend we had gone to a camping site at a state park and I'll show some of the videos or some of the, the pictures of the state park and we are quarantining we are getting out in nature and we're getting to spend time as a family and i think that all has brought my wife around to enjoy being 
and we call it's glamping it's not camping but getting out there and seeing things and we're excited for the future of when we can travel to going different places and seeing things but you know over the years i've owned other toys and what i mean by that is you know i've owned boats and they say that you know the the, the two happiest days of a boat owner's life are the day they buy and the day they sell it and another exa another saying is a uh, boat's a hole in the water you throw money and while I do agree with that, you spend a lot of money, and I don't agree with the best days are buying and selling, um, it's all the days in between. You know, the, the memories I have and the places I've gone, you know, this was prior to kids with my wife. We would go every day, you know, to get off work. We could be on the, the James River in, you know, five minutes and go fishing on the weekends, go with my buddies. Like those memories I'll always have and I can always make more money, but I can't make more memories. So while I do think they are luxury items, if you can afford them or, you know, I wouldn't bank on them being an investment. I don't think you can totally go the opposite side and say, well, you should never own one because you're losing money. Um, you know, a lot of financial gurus, a lot of We'll talk about that in in the fact of what you could do with that money. You know, if you didn't have that payment or you didn't buy that RV, then maybe you could retire five years earlier. And while I do agree with that sentiment and the saving of money, I also realize the value of time and the fact that I don't know if I'm going to have five years earlier in that retirement. You know, I don't I don't know what my longevity is. No one knows every day if it's going to be their last. And I'm not saying to spend every dime you have and go into debt and do all those, but do calculated choices on the money you spend. And my logic on the potentially going full-time is to bring those years of retirement now. You know, spread my retirement out through my life versus waiting for this magical number to when we can potentially go traveling and we can potentially see things and we can uh, enjoy retirement because nowadays it's really hard as I see older people, are they truly enjoying retirement? Do they get to travel? Or are they always worried about their health or um, things like that? So a little bit of rambling there, but you know, I just, I want to be truthful with my channel and I want to talk about the benefits of saving and investing, but I also want to be real in the fact that most people are going to spend money that they shouldn't, I guess. Uh, but where you spend that money, I think, matters. You know, I don't, I don't go out for coffee. I don't eat out a lot. We don't do a lot of those things. So in my mind, I look at what I spent on the RV or experiences, I wouldn't ever take that back. Even if I even if I sold the RV tomorrow, lost money on it, I don't think I would regret it because I have those memories. You know, someday I can look back that I took my kids to these scenes, these sites, uh, got exploring, got the memories, got the pictures. Um, like I've always said, I can make more money. You can make more money over time, but you can't make more time. So. Long-winded explanation. Uh, it's a, a roundabout explanation, but I guess if I were to be truthful about the topic, I would say RVs are a horrible investment because you will never get your money back from them, but you will get your return on your investment, to me, is priceless. Like I said, with those pictures, with those memories, I can never get that time back but I can make more money. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you wanna watch more videos on financial topics, consider subscribing. I hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and until next time, have a great day.